Today on the channel, it's the return of the Kyle Peterson Top 5 with a special guest, my dad. As What is my dad here for? Of course, we're going to count down the Top 5 Warlord figures of all time. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and I got a special guest today. Tom Peterson. Tom Peterson Alias back your again. Alias dad. Alias my dad, that's true, I should put that out there. And we got my dad here for the unboxing and review of the brand new Mattel Warlord figure. And I said, Dad, would you stick around? Let's do a top five Warlord countdown. We were going to get to it someday, and I figured no better day than today. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to count down my top five Warlord figures of all time. And at the end, my dad's going to say, here's what my order would be. He's going to steer me right. Maybe we'll have some in order. Maybe we'll have some in the same uh, patterns. We'll see how it all ends up shaking out. But we're going to start at number five, work our way to number one like we always do. And I'm going to tell you guys, get your list together. This is my list. This is his list. But we want to see your list. So put your list in the comments down below. And uh, you guys tell me your thoughts on all these Warlord figures. It's going to be a fun one. So buckle up, grab something to drink as we begin to count down the top five Warlord figures of all time. All right, let's begin with the top five Warlord countdown. We're starting at number five. And, you know, truth be told, there's only about six Warlord figures in existence. By my math, by my collection, by what I remember, there is only six Warlord figures. So, you know, it's not the hardest one. To, like the Ultimate Warrior Top Ten will do on the channel eventually. He's had hundreds of figures, basically, at this point. Warlord, only six, makes it a little easier, but makes it tougher in some ways. Uh, but we're going to start off at number five, and we're going to start with Mattel. Yes, Mattel Elite Series 50, the Warlord. Now, this is solo run Warlord. After the Powers of Pain uh, went their separate ways, he grabbed Slick as his manager, moved on from Mr. Fuji, and went to this look. So this was an interesting look for the Warlord. You know, I guess being a big jacked up dude wasn't enough at the time. So they said, you know what, let's give him a crazy uh, kind of like football shoulder pads, something like that. And then the big stick with the W on it. I don't know. I, I think a lot of people thought he was a wizard, mm -hmm. but uh, the W standard for wizard, but it was Warlord. Um, but this one I love a lot. This was our first modern day, as for Mattel at least, Warlord figure we received. Uh, love it. Love everything about this Warlord. But there is a few gripes I have here. This one and the sixth one I almost went back and forth on because the one thing I don't like about this Warlord, and I do think if this Warlord was released today, there would be quite some differences about this. Yes, they'd have pinless joints, they'd have double jointed stuff like we saw with the other Warlord in Elite 87, but Elite 50, they would have had the mask removable. That is my biggest gripe with this figure, you can't take his mask off, his kind of Phantom of the Opera mask. Uh, Universal Monsters, right? Universal, like Phantom, Phantom like of the that, Opera yeah. is Universal, isn't it? That's one of my least favorite is. Universal Monsters, and <laughs> you're a Universal Monsters expert, and what did you think of uh, the Phantom of the Opera? How was that for you? In, in the grand scheme of things, was that middle of the road or kind of at the bottom? Uh, it, it was uh, on the lower tier. It was, it was scary, too. but not not like Dracula. Or yeah, I, I, no. Creature from Black Lagoon is my favorite. Then you got Frankenstein, Werewolf, Dracula. I think those are the big four right. for me. That's true. Uh, after that, there were some other ones like, uh, uh, obviously, um, the Phantom of the Opera, the Invisible Man. I never understood that one. That one did absolutely nothing for me. I don't know how you feel about him. No. Um, I'm trying to think what else there was. Wasn't the Hunchback, was that part of Universal? That was part of Universal, too. And that was an earlier one, though, I think. That, that was, was real early. Real in the 1930s yeah. it was made. Yeah. So that's Phantom of the Opera Warlord. A lot of people think it's a he's a wizard from the Phantom of the Opera is what's going on here. So there's some things I don't like, but I love the big jacked-up dudeness. I always loved the silver-white tights he had going on. I always thought that was a nice look of kind of the thunder and lightning going on. I didn't mind the mask. I didn't mind the stick, but I wish the mask was removable here. If the mask was removable, he probably would have been farther up my list. But as it stands right now, he is at number five in my top five Warlord countdown. Now let's take a look at number four. All right, we've come to the number four spot, and number four is another Warlord figure, as it is the Warlord Countdown. It better be a Warlord figure. But number four, we're going in hot with Hasbro. Yes, old school Hasbro Warlord. Uh, now, big jacked up dude. Young Kyle loved these as well. And the Hasbros, 
uh, were my second generation of action figures. As you remember, the LJNs were the first incarnation of figures I had. Then I went to the Hasbros. Now, fond memories of myself going to the Targets and Toys R Us's as a small kid and picking these up. I don't know if you remember the days of seeing these on the pegs. I do remember, you bet. And I remember the days of, uh, there was a, a mailer back in the day that had uh, Honky Tonk Man and Greg the Hammer Valentine. And we would see that Valentine and we'd be looking for it and looking for it. Then all the years later when the internet finally came, we realized there was no such thing. It was just made up. And I don't know if you remember this. This is a pretty deep cut. But there was the tag team, the Nasty Boys. We had the Legion of Doom. We had the Bushwhackers. But we saw the Nasty Boys on there and we could never find them. And we were in stores all the time. Never came across the Nasty Boys. So I assumed it was much like the Greg the Hammer Valentine. They never got released. Mm -hmm. Then the internet all these years later found out they really released the Nasty Boys. I don't know what happened to distribution in our area, but never saw those Nasty Boys. But what we did see was the Warlord. and uh, Not Powers of Pain Warlord. This is akin to that last one. More solo uh, career Warlord in the WWF. Feuding with the British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith. One of your favorites. Probably one of your favorite British wrestlers that's a Bulldog. Uh, I, yeah. uh, I think everybody could say that. If, out of all the wrestlers from Britain that have Bulldog in their name, the British Bulldog has to be at the top of your list. I, I gotta think it is. But this Hasbro Warlord I absolutely loved as a kid because, like I said, big jacked up dude. But when you're a player, and I was a player back then, I played with my wrestling figures. You can attest to it. You saw True. me. True story. Uh, I had two rings. I used to carry the rings around and uh, hours and hours of fun. You would... I was probably the easiest kid because I would go to the basement and I would play with my toys after school till it was bedtime. Pretty much. I think that's what I did. So this Hasbro one spent a lot of hours of fun. So it's sentimental reasons it's on my list. It's a big jacked up Hasbro figure. It's on my list. But I love playing with this one and I would use him with the Legion of Doom and Demolition. Sometimes he'd be a partner with Demolition. Sometimes he'd be a partner uh, with the Ultimate Warrior for me. He just fit a lot of different ways. And I would create new stories from the Warlord because we all got to remember the Warlord wasn't really battling for the world title on WWE TV back in the day or WWF back then. But my imagination, he was doing big things in my childhood figure fed. So he was a favorite of mine. And a little one's getting a little harder to find. You wouldn't think this one would be hard to find. But there were so many people back in the 90s customizing this one. They'd get the old X-Acto knife out. I can't imagine doing this because I'm such a purist. I never wanted to hurt or destroy my figures. I always took immaculate care of my toys, as you remember. That, that's very true. Uh, very. You... I, go, you very protective guard him. No smudges, no smears, yes. no scrapes. Nothing. And, and I remember my friends wanting to come over and play with my wrestling toys. And, and I'd wonder, okay, what kind of player is this kid going to be? What's he going to do? Because you have the kids that do the nice moves. They do it kind of softly. They're not smudging and breaking stuff. And then you got those absolute maniac kids. And you can remember some of my friends that were probably absolute maniacs. Uh, you know where we, I'm going. We, we could tell you were on the verge of a heart attack even at a young age. Yes, yeah. yes. And you get those kids that were grabbed by the arms. They just start pounding them together. And, uh, you know, let's not play wrestling. Let's go play video games. Let's go do something else because, oh, it would just be the end of the world for me if uh, my figures got damaged and smudged up. Oh, oh. Heart attack, heart just, attack. Just not right, no. Just not right. And there was some maniacs. I had some friends that were maniacs. And I knew, put those wrestlers away when they come over. But... Um, but this Hasbro one was one that people were cutting up and turning into Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's Stone Cold it. Mania in the late 90s, early mid 90s. Everybody wanted Stone Cold figures. People were still playing with their Hasbros. Uh, you know, a lot of people skipped out on those Bendums, and rightfully so. I'm just not a Bendums guy. Uh, but the Warlord got uh, cut up and carved up and turned into Stone Cold Steve Austin so much, he's gotten a little harder to find. You can still find him. He's definitely more reasonable price than some of the other ones out there. Uh, but he is getting harder and harder to find. So Warlord coming in at number four for me. A lot of it is sentimental reasons, and that's why it's my list, and that's why I tell you to put your list down below. Uh, but the Hasbro Warlord, number four. All right, we're at the number three spot, and we're starting to see a little bit of a pattern here it's very kind of strange as i didn't realize this until we've been going through this but we're seeing a pattern of what era of the warlord i seem to really like uh so now we're here at the number three spot the halfway spot like i said make sure you put your list down in the comments below but we're looking at jack's classic superstars warlord now we got two classic superstars warlords uh back in the day you guys know my love for the jack's Classic superstars line and we got this warlord after the powers of pain warlord this once again represents his single era run now it does not have all the bells and whistles of a Mattel warlord. You didn't get any accessories with this one. It's just him. He doesn't have the mask. He doesn't have the staff, all that kind of stuff. But this one has a certain charm to it. And I think what I like the most about this one is obviously I love Jax. I love the classic superstars. 
I love the head on this one. The head with the blue on the face paint really pops. But this one, when I think of Solo Career Warlord, especially in the ring, this is the Warlord I think of. And this is actually my dad's Warlord. I have a mint one. I don't have a loose one. Uh, and I think I'll get this in the will one day if my sister doesn't want it. I'm hoping I will get this one of these days. But I know this is a favorite of yours because this is uh, displayed proudly as one of the wrestling figures in your collection on your display case. That's true. Yeah. You love this well, one. I won't be around, so hopefully it's not a big fight. <laughs> hopefully it's not no, a huge no, fight. I don't no. know. My sister's never watched I don't think Bailey's ever watched wrestling, has she? No. And I don't think she's ever went to a wrestling show once in her life. Not so, to my knowledge. So I got to think my odds are pretty good this will be in my collection one day. It just pains me to see each of you grabbing one leg and pulling oh, it apart. Oh. I just, I just, well, oh, I was just scared that you'd say, you know, I want to be cremated or, or buried, and I'm taking this with me. Because I'm taking my whole collection with me. We're going to get a big backhoe. We're going to drop it in the grave. It's going to be the biggest grave of all time. It's going to be a mountain. That's it. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it's getting real dark. Getting real dark on this review and unboxing and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But but that's for me. That's for uh, number three for me, the all-time Warlord. The classic Superstars solo career version of the Warlord. So now we're down to the final two. Let's see who came in at number two. All right, we're at the number two spot. We've got the number two warlord of all time, and this was a recent one. However, this was a hard one. I really went back and forth between one or two, and I, I'll explain my reasons and everything else here. But coming in at number two, hot off the truck, hot off the table, hot off the Mattel line from Mattel Elite 87, the collector's edition, Walmart exclusive, the recently unboxed Warlord. Love this Warlord. I love it. But is it number one? Oh, it's tough. And number one, we'll get into that one. But this one is so strong. This is definitely a top 10 figure of 2021 for me. No doubt in my mind. I absolutely love it. I love the, I want. I keep wanting to call it soft goods, but it's plastic. His vest, his Warlord Power of the Pain vest. I love the attention to detail. Even putting, uh, leaving the power, the PO part off, that's attention to detail. Uh, I just absolutely love what's going on here. I love everything about this. I love the double joints. I love the pinless joints. I love the big figure. I love the face paint. It's got everything I want in a warlord, and that's why it's at number two for me. But, man, it's close. You ask me tomorrow, this might move to number one, but this is just such a strong figure, and I'm so glad. It's a kind of a fall, early fall gift from Mattel. I don't know if they'll ever top this, and I, I almost wonder, is this our last ever warlord figure from Mattel? Very well could be. This could be our last warlord figure ever. So we got to really drink this one in. We really got to get after this one while we can. It's a beautiful one out there. So, uh, Warlord Mattel Elite Series 87. Uh, any thoughts from you on this one? You like it too. No, very nice. Good. Very, very nice. nice. I like the accessories. Very nice. Very nice. So, yeah, this is number two. And like I said, it was very tough to decide between two and one. But, you know, that's the, that's the beauty of these lists. It's very easy to put your top five favorites in. But putting them in order, that's where it gets hard. That's the true challenge in this process. So, make sure when you're putting yours in the bottom, Put them in order. So there you go. Number two, the latest Warlord from Mattel. Now we're at number one. Some of you guys may guess this, but stay tuned and check it out. All right, the time has come. We're at the number one spot for my favorite Warlord figure of all time. And once we get done with my list, my dad right here, he is going to give his top five countdown of the Warlord figure. So stay tuned for that. You won't want to miss his top five. But number one for me, like I said, one and two were close. But I had to sit back and I had to say, you know what? What would young Kyle do? What warlord brought you the most happiness over the years? When you close your eyes, like I said, you always got to go back to that. When you close your eyes and think of a figure, in this case, warlord, which one comes to mind? Which one do you think of? And that's how I got to number one here. That being said, five years from now, we could do this list all over. And it might be that Mattel one. I might say, you know, I've just grown to love this one so much. Uh, I need to have this one, but we'll see. Uh, maybe five years from now, we'll revisit this, and hopefully there's more Warlord figures uh, in that time. But as of right now, number one, Black Card Series, LJN, the Warlord. Yes, there he is. And one thing we always know about the Warlord, we'll get a Warlord figure, but we won't get the Barbarian. And that's the same thing that happened in LJN. It happened in Hasbro. Jax was good enough to get us a Barbarian. Mattel, so far, no bar bar Barbarian. 
But when I close my eyes, this is the warlord I think of. I think back to being nine years old. Uh, this guy right here purchased this set for me, uh, Ultimate Warrior. The only one I didn't get, and I don't know if you're going to remember this one, is Ravishing Rick Rude. Do you remember the one like this? He had his arms on his hip. There was zero playability. So I didn't get it. I never owned that Rick, that Rick Rude figure until I was an adult collector because I said, what am I going to do with this? There's no playability with this figure. I don't want it. I, there's nothing I can do with it. But I got the rest of the black card series, including this Warlord. And as a little kid, obviously, I absolutely love face paint. It's, it's been there since I was a little kid. Uh, I remember going to my grandma's and grabbing her lipstick one time and putting Ultimate Warrior face paint. You, you didn't probably know about that one. No. Uh, that, was, that was old Grandma Mert's house uh -huh. is where I went, <laughs> went for that one. But I uh, put my own face paint in there, and it was, it was crazy. It was with lipstick. But love face paint. Love the Warlord back then. Love getting this figure. Very disappointed I didn't get Barbarian, but myself, like a lot of you guys probably out there that were a player in your LJN days, you grabbed this Warlord and you used him with Axe that we got in LJN because we didn't get Smash. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of a theme here. So I would make them be the Powers of Pain or Demolition and I would use him with the Ultimate Warrior sometimes. So you had to use your imagination. You had to get creative as a little kid. And that's what I had to do with this Warlord, uh, for good or for bad. Uh, but it just still sticks <clears throat> out after all these years. Big, jacked-up dude in the LJN line. Maybe a little skinny compared to some of the other guys out there, but he still looked big, still looked jacked up. Great playability, and that was such a key when you got LJN figures that have no articulation to them. You need guys that have these poses. You can do power slams. You can do clotheslines, uh, all kinds of stuff with this Warlord. So I always liked the position he was in. And this Warlord is extremely valuable at this time. Uh, there's a Black Card series. There's a whole history on that. Maybe we'll deep dive that more in the channel one of these days. Uh, but the Black Card Warlord, extremely, one of the top five hardest to get LJNs at this time. Uh, just, they were not released in the amounts of some of the earlier series. So this is hard to get. It is special. But I love playing with this one as a kid. And that's why he came in at number one for me. Uh, but we'll see. Like I said, a couple years from now, maybe one and two will switch. But as of this moment, filming this video, this is number one for me. Now we got to line them up and we're going to see what my dad thinks his top five will be. All right. And as a bonus, my dad is going to list his favorite Warlord figures, counting down five down to number one. So dad, number five for you, what Warlord figure? Probably the Hasbro right here. Going with the Hasbro at number five. There it is. Okay, how about number four? Right here. Oh, he's going to the Mattel Series 50 Elite in uh, number three. Right there. Oh, he's going to the new one. So that was number two for me. So that's number three. It hasn't warmed your heart too much yet, but number three. It's getting there. It's, it's getting there. It could be close. like me. It's getting close. You wait a while. It might move up the yeah. line once you, mm -hmm. once you soak it and drink it in a little right. bit longer. All right, now we're down to the top two. What do you got at number two? This guy right here, the LGN. LJN Warlord, looking pretty good. That was my number one. That's his number two, so I'm interested to know because he hasn't told me his list yet. And I should mention, too, we do have this one. This was number six. There's only six Warlord. He didn't make the top five for me. But, Dad, who do you got as your number one? Right here. The, the wow. winner. The, the winner. winner. That's the winner. The classic superstar solo career, Jax, uh, classic superstars warlord. Uh, the one that you brought from your collection. I said, Dad, could you bring that over when you come so we can take a look at that? So an interesting list. Some similarities, but some differences here. But he's a true warlord expert, so we got to go to his list, I think, uh, before we go to mine. But and I do like this guy, too. Like I said, I think I think the face and the neck are a little bit more realistic on these older ones. But yeah. I, but I do like the new one. And you're right. You pointed that out in the review of this one. Missing a little bit of neck action here. That is the only negative I can really find out of that one. And when you look to the Jax ones, it just looks a little bit better. Because, you know, he's a big jacked up dude. And uh, he does look a little stumpy with the neck like that. But an interesting Warlord collection. I wish there was more Warlord figures. I'm pretty sure this is all of them. If I missed one, you guys let me know in the comments. But I'm 99.999% positive this is all the Warlord. Lord figures. I don't know what I would possibly be missing unless there's a weird some foreign bootleg or something like that which I don't even think there is of that but very cool warlord top five you guys in the comments let me know your top five count them down five to number one I'd love to hear your guys's opinion you hear both of ours now let's hear yours and make sure you like this video make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the old notification bell we're dangerously close we're right around 10,000 subscribers and once we do get there we're gonna do some giveaways we're gonna do a Q&A video and I'm gonna do an ultimate warrior top 10 so be prepared for that we just need a few more subscribers so if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you do 
Uh, we need your help. We need your help out there. And then, of course, follow me on social media at SirPaul64 on Twitter, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on Instagram, ProWrestlingTees.com. Um, search Kyle Peterson. And my dad, I'd say we'd plug your social media and your YouTube channel, but you don't got any of that. Uh, no, I'm on TikTok. It's, it's called oh. uh, Tom's Dance Party every Wednesday. You'll see moves you haven't seen since... 60s, maybe I 50s, believe that. I know, believe that. So, Tom, TikTok, he's just ahead of me. I don't understand yeah. this TikTok, but you and uh, the kids you gotta keep are always TikTok. They're always on. doing dances yeah. and all yeah. kinds of stuff yeah. like that. So follow him on TikTok, and you can find me on the other social medias. And, Dad, thank you for coming. I will give you your Warlord. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Got to give him a Warlord. You guys saw me. I had to find one for him. It'll go great with your number one Warlord. And we'll see what happens in the future. This one might jump into number one. And I wouldn't space. have come over here unless I would have got this. That's true. I had to promise him, Dad, I'll give you the Warlord, but you got to do this. Right, so I had exactly. to convince him into it. So there it is. So for my dad, for the Warlord, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.